Thank you for joining us. Before we get started on today's episode, just a quick reminder to please smash the like button in the bottom right corner and subscribe to Locked On Senators so you can be the first to know when new content arrives. The best way to help us grow is to comment on the video as well. So let us know if this is a player you want the Sens to draft or you think they should stay away from and let us know why as well. This is one of 64 draft profiles that we're producing. So let's get into it. Coming in at number six on our NHL draft rankings on the Locked On Senators podcast, we've got Joakim Kamel. You don't have to go too many mock drafts to find this guy's name sprinkled as a future Ottawa Senator. What makes him a potential fit in Ottawa, Pilsy? There are a lot of reasons, Ross, and I'll start off with the biggest reason, and that's his shot. Joakim Kamel, he can rip it. Absolutely 15 goals in Liga this year in 39 games. The fact that he was one of those guys that didn't have to bounce around between um, different leagues in uh, overseas. Sorry, I'm just looking at his uh, EP here. Yeah, he only played in Liga as far as uh, Finnish competition goes. He did play internationally, of course. At uh, the U18s, he had himself one hell of a tournament. Six goals in five games and eight points in five games. So... As you can tell, a guy that can rip it like that, he's going to turn some heads. And uh, a lot of mock drafts, a lot of people saying he makes a bunch of sense for the Sens. So he was listed as 5'11 on his team's website. But at the Combine, he he measured in at 5'9.5, which is a little... Huh? I even saw Pronman had him at 510.75. Like, we can't be getting into 0.25s <laughs> no. of an inch here, guys. No, we can't. We really can't. Someone over <laughs> six feet would never, would never use a 0.25 <laughs> on their height. <laughs> He's, uh, we're going to give him that extra half inch, though. So we're at, we have him listed as 5'10, 185. He's from Liga, right wing, right shot as well. Six goals in eight, six goals and eight points in five games at the world under 18s. And he's a guy that stays out of the box, too. Only two penalty minutes. Pilsy told you he's got 15 goals in 39 games. And the rankings, if we do this Olympic style and take out the highest and lowest, we've got probably the tightest range so far. Because, well, Bob McKenzie has him at three, and Elite Prospects has him at 10. So you take those two out, and we've got five for Craig Button, seven for Scott Wheeler, seven for Corey Prodman, eight for Chris Peters, and nine for... For Tony Ferrari. So you can see that averages out to a rank of seven, which just so happens to be where the Senators draft in this in this year. So all that to say, a shooter, but not only that, Pilsy, talk about this guy's motor a little bit because he is always hunting the puck. Yeah, and that's what makes a guy like jo- a Joachim Kamel different than someone, let's say, uh, Jonathan Lekaramaki, right? Like, the motor that Kamel has is wild. Sure, he play he's a smaller player, but I wouldn't say he plays like a small player because he competes hard physically, especially on the forecheck. He, like, when a guy has a shot like this, he's like, I want to always have the puck in the offensive zone. That is my puck when it's on this side of the blue line, and if I don't have it, You better watch out because I'm coming to get it. And I love that style. And for a guy that's his size and younger to be throwing hits in the pro league, like he had a couple open ice hits I saw in highlights. And that takes some balls to be able to do that because you might have to answer to that uh, later on. And when you're a smaller guy, that's not the position you want to be in. But Kamel doesn't care. He's a gold helmet wearing player that throws his weight around, even if it's it's, uh, only 175 pounds worth of it. So, that's where I think when you're looking at the Sens taking a shooter, Kamel makes a lot of sense because he's not just a big shot. Like he's not your Mike Hoffman, a guy that's just hanging out waiting to use his shot. He works hard to get um, to get the puck and so that he can do that. And I think there's a lot to like and he would fit in with the way the Sens like to play. I really like the shades of that elite prospects used here. Think Victor Olofsson. From the Buffalo Sabres, like quick strike offense. But when you watch him, he's a lot more than that, but a little undersized. But you can see 30 goal potential of this guy in the National Hockey League. And Pronman, his, uh, I thought you were going to go with this, a different Victor. His uh, player comparable was Victor Arvidsson, which I think is another good example of where he could end up. Yeah, Lee Prospects also said Brock Besser. I don't see that as much. Besser's a big body, can use that a little bit more to grind down low. But 
Uh, I like it's just like quick strike offense, but these guys are so shifty as well. They can carry the puck through neutral zone and get up into the offensive zone. And I, I just really like this player. I mean, I'm not as high on him as I was of, of yesterday with Cutter Gauthier. I'm definitely, I, if this is my personal rankings, I'd flip these two easily. Um, maybe we'll have to put out our own list right before the draft or it's like these are our top 10 of how we would want the sense to draft and maybe we take out guys like Slavkowski and Wright who just won't be there so anyways <laughs> that's a little brainstorming session in the middle of this one of course you can go to locked on senators and check it out if you're just watching this video on demand all of our draft profiles will be on demand but Joaquin Kamel super interesting player we we spoke with Tony Ferrari and that interview is coming out on locked on senators uh, YouTube page soon here and he said the difference between Brad Lambert, when these two played together a little bit, Brad Lambert, Joaquin Kamel, is they kept bumping Lambert all over the lineup. And they said to Kamel, they said, you're just going to play with our best player and spend the whole year together. So how much can that help a guy's development? Big time. And and that's we talk about this over and over again when we're looking at prospects overseas. Sometimes it is just absolutely baffling what coaches and uh, development programs do to these poor kids, bouncing them all over the place. Joaquin Kamel, he was very fortunate in the fact that he got to play in one league, in one team, on one line for an entire season. And I know maybe you're thinking at home, well, that's not that big of a deal. It is for developing players because they're working on so many different parts of their game. If they constantly have to be adjusting to new coaches, new systems, new teams, new cities, new leagues, like it's just, it's a whirlwind for these players. So to be able to have that stability is massive. And the th the thing with uh, Joaquin Kamel though, Ross, is yes, he is a shooter, but he tends to lean on that a little bit too much. He takes a lot of low percentage shots. Uh, I, I went through his game logs, Ross, and he averaged 4.3 shots per game in Liga. So that's pretty damn impressive to average over four shots in a pro league as a smaller teenager. But the issue with that is he's not getting the best spots to score. Like only one game, he had zero shots. So he's always taking shots. He had one game with 10 shots. No goals. Like, to have 10 shots and no goals, those are probably not the best opportunities. So, as he develops, he's going to have to learn how to get into those uh, hard-to-get areas, into that home plate spot in front of the net where bigger, stronger defensemen are going to be pushing him out of the way, but he has to learn to battle for those spots and get open so that when he does get his opportunity to use his big shot, he's going to be setting himself up for more success. So that is one thing I think is very interesting with Joachim Kamel. Where do you think he needs to work on the most to become a full-time NHLer? I mean, that that would definitely be one spot. I, I think like the fact that he plays with so much pace and so much compete, I think that's going to really help him out Um in other areas of the game, like defensively, because he, he doesn't stand still. And some of the, the scouts' comments are, every time Joachim Kamel goes over the boards, something happens. Like, it might not be a grade-A scoring chance, but he's making things happen. I, I mean, when you get 4.3 shots uh, per game on average, you're making things work, or at least happen. So I think the thing with Kamel is he's just going to have to learn how to get into those dangerous spots and not be afraid of um, a sm smaller body up in those battles. Because the, the mindset's there. Just the physicality isn't quite at a level it needs to be for the pros, in if the NHL at least. If you're the team that drafts him, Pilsy, are you sending him back to JYP next season? Are you trying to get him into the AHL like Roby Jarventi? Or where are you looking to play him? Personally, I'm bringing him to the AHL because you got to get these guys over to proper uh, size rinks if you have aspirations for them to play in the pros. It's such a difference, especially for uh, for forwards trying to find ways to get into those tight spots. It's a lot harder to do in a smaller rink. So that's what I would be doing. And as as we talked about, Tony filled us in that JYP was not a good team. Like Gone they were, Joe. yeah, they were one of the worst teams in Liga. So even though that that means he's going to get good opportunities and he's probably going to remain on that uh, top line with the top player and get top power play units. That's all great. But I think he's had enough Liga experience that he's, he's, he can move on from that. And if I'm an NHL team and I use a top 10 pick on him, I want to get him going in my system in North America and have uh, like our development coaches taking a look at him over, over here. So I would move him to the AHL. So he hit a bit of a wall in the middle of the season. 
But as you can see from Elite Prospects, if you're watching here, in the last few games, he absolutely dominated. And he hit a wall because he had a shoulder injury. That's important to note. Okay, good to know. Uh, April 27th, 2004, birthday. And then as we can see here, when he's playing against his own age group, he absolutely dominates. 22 goals in 38 games there with the under 20 as a 16-year-old, Pilsy. So even still not above his age group, but contributing. So, and you know, there's the development that we see playing a bunch of teams, but then this year settling in and then was awesome at the world under 18s with Finland. He wore an A there and had six goals in five games. So a real good player. How many cent stars are you giving Joaquin Kamel? I'm a big fan of Kamel. Uh, I'm giving him four and a half stars, Ross. I think it's not just a coincidence and it's not just guys being like, well, he's seventh overall in my ranking, so I'm going to put him seventh overall to the Sens. It does make a lot of sense. The Sens need a guy with another big shot. You can't have just Norris uh, being a finisher on the power play. And they're not going to sacrifice um, pace and compete level for that great shot. Whereas Joachim Kamel, he brings both. And it's important to note too, uh, for EP's draft guide, Ross, only four players received a seven grade on the shot. Kamel is one of those guys. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm going to go with a four. I I like him a lot. I just, again, there's a couple of guys who we're going to get to. And like even Nazar and Cutter Gauthier. The real debate for me is who would I rather between Kamel and Lakaramac? Yeah, I probably lean. I probably lean Kamel. What about I probably uh, lean Kamel? And I, ga- I gave him. Can I do four point two five? Because he's a small player, he gets the two point five here. Also. Oh my god! Well, I mean, everyone's doing that with his height, anyways. So yeah, I'll, I, I mean, I'll, I'll allow it. It's kind of untraditional, but uh, I'll allow it here, Ross. My question to you is: You know what? Screw it. Four point five. Yeah, give him the bump. Give him the. Bump. I will. Love I it. will. Um, what about this? Joachim Kamel versus Matthew Savoy. Kamel. Okay, and I, I would like to go back. I gave Savoy a 3.5, didn't I? I did. Yeah, I've got it right here. I gave Savoy 3.5. You gave him a 4. Yeah. So you'd take Kamel as well. Yeah, I would take Kamel as well. And I'll go back. I said yesterday I would take Savoy over uh, Nazar. I think I'll take Nazar. That, okay, I, think that I was... thought you were going to go back on your first five-star guy. No, 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 no. I, um... yeah. Well, Gautier was my first five-star guy. That's what I'm saying. Oh, when yeah. you're like... Oh, go back to yesterday. I was nervous. No, 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 not doing that. I think it was recency bias. I was caught up in uh, Savoy's uh, offensive offensive flair, but yeah, Frank Nazar, like re re uh, discovering him and going back. The ceiling is legit. Like he is, he is the highest ceiling in the draft. You got to take a swing on that. So I, I'm going on Nazar. All right, sounds good. So you've got four and a half stars. I've got four and a half stars for Joakim Kamel, a guy who. I'm pretty confident if the Sens pick, this is this could be their guy if Cutter Gauthier is off yes. the board. So let us know what you think about Joaquin Kamel.